welcome you to today's webinar, Leadership and Development, Effective Leadership Through Coaching. I'm going to hand things over to our featured presenter today. She is Executive Leadership Coach and Professional Development Consultant, Ms. Erin Cambier. Erin, you now have the floor. Thanks, Kelly. That was perfect. Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending upon where you're tuning in from. I'm really excited to be joining you today to talk more about effective leadership through coaching. I love this topic because not only is it relevant to you if you're a current leader, but it's also relevant if you're interested in promoting to leadership. And coaching is a skill that can be utilized even in our personal lives with our, if you have children, in our other relationships. Coaching is just one of those dynamics that really is going to take all of your relationships to the next level. So a little bit about me, um, I am a executive leadership and career coach with 20 years experience um, coaching leaders um, and professionals of all different levels. Um, I definitely specialize in this topic, effective leadership through coaching, as well as do a lot with emotional intelligence, um, managing remote teams and all that good stuff. So I'm super excited to be here with you today. Before we get started, I would love to learn a little bit more about you if you're listening in. Tell us about using the poll function Kelly's going to show for you shortly, what your experience of coaching is. If you have a lot of experience coaching others, if you have some experience coaching others, um, or you're new to this and ready to learn and, and don't have a lot of experience but ready to take it to the next level, go ahead and use the poll function on your screen and tell us now. Are you seeing the results come in there, Kelly? Yes, sorry, I should have unmuted. Okay. <laughs> We're at oh. about 18% uh, eight, for I have a lot of experience, 75% uh, for some experience, and about 8% for no experience. Okay. Perfect. Well, everyone, no matter where you are, there's no right or wrong on that um, spectrum, but that gives me a little bit of idea of, of where you are in this process. And I want you to think about on the other side of things, from you as a professional, um, how much have you been coached? Um, have you been coached very much throughout your career? And if you're not even sure what that means, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Or do you, uh, have you been been coached some, I'm working my way up on the list, or do you have a lot of experience being coached that you have someone who's really taken you under their wing and mentored you? Go ahead and, and tell us now through the poll and then Kelly will share the results. And Erin, real quick while everyone is doing that right now, um, for some reason the audio uh, is coming through kind of choppy, so I don't know if it's the microphone, um, mm. but I could always switch to speaker on my computer. We might want to try that. It's pretty you choppy. To and try that. For some reason, okay. when we tested audio, it did not do that. So Yes. <laughs> Technology. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Let's give this a shot. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. That's much better. It is? Okay, great. Well, yeah. I can hear you too. So we will just do um, speaker on my computer. No problem. Okay, so how do we come in? How does our group in terms of experience being coached? Yeah, we've got about 19% have a lot of experience being coached. 69% uh, have some experience and about 12% have no experience. Okay. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And thank you everybody for weighing in. I think it's always interesting to go through this process because when we think about as a, as a leader, we want, we do want to develop our team and we do want to coach more. Um, but many of us have not been in that position of even knowing what an effective coaching relationship looks like or how to, um, grow that for ourselves. So this is a good example. Hopefully someday your teams will be on this call and they'll be able to raise their hand for, I have a lot of experience being coached because they'll think of you as that leader or professional who was alongside them, you know, mentoring them in that growth process. So let's go to the next slide here. Are we still okay on audio, Kelly? Yep, sounds good. Okay. Super. Well, today, um, here's a couple of objectives we're going to run through in the next hour. Um, we're going to talk about the core principles of effective coaching and how to develop a positive coaching relationship with your employees. We're also going to talk about 
how as a coach you can support employee growth and as well as provide effective coaching and feedback within a relationship of building mutual trust. Um, again, this is a high level overview. Coaching is such a really encompassing topic that we can't go through everything in an hour, but this is definitely a, a really good overview of how to take your coaching um, to the next level today. So the foundation of the concept of what coaching is, if you're a leader or want to be in a leadership role, um, it's really important that you see yourself as a coach. A leader and a coach are congruent together. That it is not a, you're being a leader or you're being a coach. It is an and relationship. Um, this relationship is mutually beneficial. Um, and sometimes what happens is we think, well, gosh, if I'm a leader, I need to be a fierce leader and I need to be driving the team. And that doesn't mean that I can be a coach because some of us have um, some views that coaching might be soft per se. Um, and I want to squelch any of those views and say that you can be a fierce leader and you can be highly effective and you can utilize coaching as a tool in that because that is exactly what will take your leadership to the next level. The leader as a coach supports you to really recognize the purpose of workplace coaching and the value of coaching as a key leadership competency. Um, a leader as a coach also helps you identify the characteristics, values, and beliefs of an effective leader coach and i want you to consider the importance of a relationship between a leader and an employee to their performance at work in other words the better leadership the better leader who's coaching is also going to have employees that perform better um, for that team as well so what is coaching uh, many people have an idea of what coaching is and there might be some misperceptions out there so i think it's important we talk about this Coaching focuses on future choices and possibilities while applying learning from past experiences. And as we have on the slide there, it is more about how things are done rather than what things are done. And I want to encourage you to think about that as when you when you see the word how that is um, their approach, their attitude, their belief or their behaviors and the effects um, and what is specifically a task. So there is a difference between what a task and how, which is our behaviors and attitudes. Um, tasks or skills, they can be taught. Whereas a change of attitude, a change of behavior or approach, um, coaching needs to create that awareness for that employee. Coaching helps you gain commitment to moving forward and really get that personal choice on behalf of the employee to change and make long-term results. In, and then the second bullet there, coaches use a style that supports employees to discover answers for themselves rather than telling or teaching. Coaching is absolutely learner-centered. Um, coaches ask rather than tell, and they listen more than they talk. Coaching facilitates self-discovery and self-confidence. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't have an idea going into that conversation of where you hope that will end up or what you're wanting to lead that person to, but you can do that through questions and be remaining open, open in that and letting that employee self-discover. Um, in some organizations where performance is measured solely on output or personal achievement of tasks, it's possible to meet or exceed expectations, uh, maybe on their performance review or on some of their goals, um, despite being a nightmare to work with, right? Um, or even working in a way that prevents others from achieving their results. But most companies now realize that best performance is a balance of both. It is outputs, which is you know getting those goals as well as outcomes. How are they contributing to the team's success and creating that positive working relationship that isn't gonna just get a short-term goal, but is going to consistently build um, for long-term performance. Let's talk about the purpose and effect of coaching. The purpose of coaching is to help employees realize their full potential and maximize their performance. The employee is then empowered to achieve their own goals and find their own answers. This adds value to their contribution and increases their job satisfaction. Think about a time when in your personal or your professional life, someone you know, showed up and said, this is what you need to do. And they told you every step of the way. Um, did you feel excited and empowered and engaged? Or did you feel like, okay, they're just telling me what to do and I'm not really using my brain in this process. 
Um, I want to encourage you as a leader that that's what coaching is all about. The purpose is to help employees reach their full potential and maximize their performance. When you get ideas and feedback from people, you can typically achieve your goals much more successfully. If coaching is seen all around in a positive, proactive manner, it helps people to succeed and grow rather than coaching only be used when things go wrong. I worked for an organization where the term coaching meant you're in trouble. <laughs> this person needs to be coached. You need to have a coaching conversation with them. And it was only utilized in a negative manner. And I want to invite you to, if that's your organization, I'm not judging, um, but I'm saying as a leader, I want you to expand your mindset and think about coaching really as creating a collaborative relationship. It's creating an ongoing discussion with your employees that are um, not necessarily just negative, um, or to begin when things go wrong, but it is truly a conversation to be able to help your employee raise their performance to the next level. Even our top performers can grow. In fact, your top performers are the people you want to be spending probably the most time with so that you can maximize their growth and contribution to the team. So remember as we go through today that our conversations, when we use the word coaching, is definitely not um, just a negative con concept. However, if you do have someone who's not performing, yes, a coaching conversation can be extremely beneficial. And yes, you're going to want to have those conversations with them. Um, I just want to encourage you, you know, look at it both ways. A powerful leadership competency is coaching. It is truly a transformational leadership competency. Contemporary leaders understand that their own success is dependent upon their team's success. Um, coaching others and, and your ability to coach others in the most effective way not only helps you more successfully lead your team, but it also helps you ensure that the value of, that each team member is making is at the highest level. Um, enabling employees to improve their ability to perform a task or develop a new behavior is transformational. It's letting your employees know that they can become more independent, more self-reliant, and then truly it does um, deliver bottom line results. The more effective your team is, you probably already know if you're a leader, um, the more effective you will be. And you could all day answer questions for them um, and tell them what to do, but that's really not going to get them to the next level. When someone is coming in and asking you the same question over and over, um, that is a sign that it's an opportunity of, am I coaching them or am I just telling them what to do? Um, regardless, the, the idea of every conversation, you want to really move to a coaching conversation. You don't want to just give them answers and send them off on a task. You want to ask them questions that help them discover the best way to go about it. Um, and when we have those aha moments for ourselves, it's so much more impactful, isn't it? It's like just that light bulb turns on and we get the why. We understand that and we become excited. And that's what you want to do in your role um, as a coach leader. The importance of the leader and employee relationship is really the foundation of, of coaching. Employee performance is significantly impacted and affected by the relationship they have with their boss, right? And the better relationship that you have with your team, the more effective you're going to be as a partner. Your role does not necessarily need to be, nor should it be, to scare everyone and invoke fear on your team for results. But really creating that loyalty and that partnership is um, listed there in that second section. A coaching relationship is one of mutual trust and respect. Focus on the development and growth of the employee. They become partners in performance where each contributes to the success of the other. How awesome would it feel as a boss to go to work every day and think everyone on my team is dedicated not only to their own success, but also to my success as their boss. That's an incredibly rewarding feeling. And I want to encourage you that if you don't have that now, that can come, that can be achieved. And that can come through your leadership and your ability to coach those employees and create that and foster that relationship to the next level. Now, it's not just through coaching. It's also about the relationship that you develop, but coaching is the foundation um, of that relationship development. So every employee is unique. Um, how you work with every person on your team is defined by that relationship that you have with them. So I want to encourage you to think about your team as individuals. Um, treating everyone the exact same 
uh, may seem fair, but when you think about it, it is the least fair way to operate because we are all different. Um, fair and consistent does not mean the same. Um, so it's really as a manager looking at what are the talents of everyone on my team? Everyone has talent. Everyone has potential to grow and learn. It's our job as a leader to understand the uniqueness of every person on our team and to unlock the potential that engages that individual and helps them bring their performance to the next level. On the last bullet here, it says, we all have a price we pay for the strengths we bring. These show up as things we aren't great at and would rather avoid. Um, and on the next slide, we talk here about uh, weaknesses. Um, and we really prefer, as a coach, focus on strengths and gaps rather than trying to fix weaknesses. In other words, um, for most of us, things that are that that are we are not great at are probably never going to be something that we are exceptional at, um, and vice versa. Um, so if you focus on, okay, what are this person's strengths? How can I maximize their strengths while also minimizing the gaps? Because that doesn't mean we have to ignore areas where maybe they're not performing, but truly that will take your team to the next level. The leader-coach relationship works with the individual to assess their strengths and how to best deploy them. We, we sometimes hear people calling them weaknesses, but really, uh, as it says on the previous slide, it's the price to pay for the strengths we bring. I know that I, um, one of my strengths is that I, I love communicating, and I'm very expressive when I communicate. I put a lot of energy into that, and hopefully you can tell that based on our call today. But a potential um, opportunity or potential price that I pay for the strength I bring is sometimes that can appear overly, um, you know, can be too much for some people. Some people, especially if they're analytical, may not want that in that same communication manner. And that could then be a gap for me that if I don't actively manage and I don't have someone who is a partner in that, um, that could eventually become a bigger gap long term. So that's an example of looking at not only your own strengths, but what are the strengths of the people on your team? Identifying those gaps and then helping employees figure out how they can best use their talents and strengths to achieve their goal. Um, this supports the individual to realize their own potential and really drive that success just as much as you are driving that success. And I forgot to mention, we're running through a lot of information in a short period of time. So if you have questions, I encourage you to put them in the chat box. Um, Kelly is moderating that and we will, um, she definitely has permission to interrupt me at any time with any questions, but we also will save time at the end to discuss any questions. So. Um, though I am sharing a lot, this is definitely an open forum and I encourage any questions as we go. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is learning about a model called the GROW model. And this concept um, is a foundation for helping you learn about how you can identify the four steps in the coaching process. You can recognize the significance of each step in this model, and then you can apply it once you get back to work after our session. So here's a visual of the GROW model. The GROW model is one of the most established and successful coaching models um, and has been around for many years. It was created by Sir John Whitmore um, and his colleagues in the 1980s. And it was popularized, um, he wrote a book called Coaching for Performance. Um, it is a really good book about um, going in depth on this topic. Uh, and we'll of course go through an overview on the webinar today, but most of the large global organizations use this model or something very similar as a basis for their coaching. The GROW model helps you organize your coaching process in a flow that identifies the goal first and ends with putting a plan together. So as you can see there, GROW stands for uh, goals, reality, options, and will. And we're going to talk about um, each step next. So first, we're going to talk about the goal. As with anything, it is so important that you begin with the end in mind. So it is vital that all coaching um, starts with a goal. Um, as Stephen Covey says in begin in his Seven Habits with a, with highly of highly effective people, begin with the end in mind. So clarifying and agreeing on the goal, defining what you want, where you want to end up is really a critical part in this coaching journey. Spend some time with your employee or with a person you're coaching. 
find out what their goals are, um, why achieving them is important, and gain their buy-in. Um, and this is where relationship building is important also. If you have not created a solid relationship with that person that you are attempting to coach, even starting with establishing goals is going to be challenging. So I want to encourage you that um, go back and have a conversation with your team and talk about, you know, what are their goals? Um, what are their goals personally and professionally? And how does that contribute to the team? And it can help you guys start to come together as a coach and coachee um, to create well-formed outcomes that define the specific results required. Now, if you're having an individual coaching relation or coaching conversation about a specific topic, again, you're going to define before you go in, what are some of my goals? Um, and then together, when you start talking about it, you'll define, you know, what are what are the goals we want to achieve? How will we know it's been achieved? How will we measure it? Um, how will we know um, that our relationship is effective in, in working together towards achieving those, those goals? Clarity over what results are required and why they are important in terms of goals will help the coachee to assess how, um, in other words, those possible solutions. Clear goals really are the cornerstone of this model. Uh, if you don't have clear goals, you're not going to be successful at the next three steps. So a goal has to be agreed and defined in order to provide direction and purpose in those coaching sessions. So as you probably know in everything else, ambiguous goals are never going to be achieved because you won't know how you get there and you won't know when you arrive. So making sure that those goals are specific and clear in the beginning um, is really important and that you've gained agreement um, you know, from your, your employee as you're going through this coaching process and talking about what those goals are. Identifying appropriate goal areas. It says here it's imperative for you and your employee to engage in a few brief conversations before embarking on coaching. And this is where I mentioned you're going to want to know more about who they are, what motivates them, what are their personal and professional goals and aspirations. And if I could bold one bullet on this slide, it would be that last one in the top section that says, hold back on talking too much, even if you're tempted. When we are coaching, um, we are tempted to talk more because we typically have plenty to say. However, in order for you to gain information and identify appropriate goal areas, you must listen more. Um, the old saying, you have two ears and one mouth, is absolutely relevant in coaching relationships and to you as a boss. I want you to listen twice as much as you talk. And your objective here is to catch as much information as possible to help you determine then what specific areas you can leverage to achieve results. So you're not listening just to say you listened, you are listening very purposefully so you can create strong conversations after that. And then the last bullet, even achieving small goals creates positive reinforcement. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is listen for those key areas so that you can identify that and move forward um, to be able to consistently have those conversations and recognize them when they achieve those small goals in the process. I want you to just think about, this is more of a self-reflection about um, those opportunities that may present, your, present right now for those impromptu coaching sessions. Coaching is typically more of a formal plan process. So, um, you're proactively agreed to to have, you know, maybe you have week weekly one on ones with your employees, and that's an opportunity for you to have coaching. Yes, and what we're talking about today fits that model. But I also wanted to use this slide and encourage you to think about. We don't have time to go into the the whole chat um, about this, but I encourage you to think about coaching can happen when you notice someone doing something well, or when you notice something hasn't worked out, or you're picking up on a negative vibe you sense there's an issue. Any of those times are an opportunity that you can launch right into a coaching conversation and utilize the same model um, because the more you practice using it in a formal way, the better it will, the easier it will be to execute in an informal way. So I threw out, I have a slide in here before each section just so you remember how this goes. So goals and the next one is reality. Get back to reality people. Okay, so we've set our goals and now we want to um, work together to make sure that they are aware of the actual situation. So in other words, maybe this is a conversation where the employee knows the goals for our team are to meet, um, you know, to sell 100 widgets this week. So where where has 
your performance then within that. That's where looking at where is today's reality. Um, you're going to use active listening to understand what is real for your coach E. Then together, you will identify the coachee's strengths and talents and any obstacles that may have been facing that have been holding him or her back. One of the biggest errors people make in this part is, you know, you should be getting at your goal. You need to get at your goal and, you know, go do that. Um, this is, that's not coaching. Um, that's not looking at what is holding, engaging them in a conversation and identifying what is holding them back and pulling that out and creating a conversation where you can talk about the current circumstances and situation to be able to eliminate hurdles. Maybe that hurdle for them is, is mental or maybe it's a resource, but the only way to do that is to identify what are the goals we're supposed to get to and assess the reality of that current situation. So we're gonna clarify the current reality. We will come to terms with the current situation. We will apply a process to identify and address our issues. And then we will use our past successes to stimulate positivity. So this is where if you created that strong foundation of a great relationship and you've been recognizing that employee, it's much easier to get that conversation to a point of current reality, which is we have more details in the next slide. Um, but if you have not, um, this is the opportunity. Every day is a new day. Today is your chance. Go back and focus on relationships so that you can launch into these coaching conversations much easier. So when assessing the current reality, it is really just about assessing what is our current level of performance and is there a development need or aspiration that should be addressed? And does the employee have a talent or skill that could be further developed? Gaining clarity about the situation or opportunity begins with identifying the problem or development opportunity. And then from there, obstacles are better identified. This is why this conversation is so helpful for even your top performers because it talks all about, is there a talent or skill that we could be better developing um, in this process? I'm gonna go right to some good questions to ask when we're framing the reality. Um, and those are included on this slide. Um, what's happening right now? Uh, how often is it happening? When does it happen? And then what is the effect? Um, how does it affect the team, the department, the organization? Um, how does that fit into you know, the overall goals? And, and really realization of the problem marks that starting point. It serves on as a marker on performance. So they may discover that they're not reaching their production goals because they're actually taking extra time to do something um, that maybe they could be utilizing technology for, or maybe they're doing something incorrectly and we're not aware. So this is where the collaboration in this whole conversation is really critical. Okay, so for reference, I threw the GROW model back in there. We have goals, reality, and now we're gonna move on to developing options. So what can we do here? The option stage offers the opportunity for the coach to suggest possible courses of action. I want to encourage you to evaluate all options and listen to everything they have to say. Try to not shoot anything down immediately, but this is to create that collaborative um, relationship. And really anything as far as options can be framed in a positive way. So help them to imagine the future and project into it um, so that they can identify ways to move forward. Um, that they can assess the benefits and impacts of each option um, and even start to begin to formulate and structure a preliminary plan. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't maybe guide them in this, but the more you empower them to do this, the more they will actually start doing this on their own. Um, the more you'll be helping them to honestly coach themselves as they look at situations and challenges. In developing options, it is important that you work with them to identify options and action steps that will improve their performance and or move them towards their career aspirations or goals. So if you show up saying, here's the problem, here's reality, and here's what you're going to do, um, again, that leads to that next section there where we say prefabricated options formulated by an employee's manager will result in poor buy into the process as well as ultimately very likely missed goals. So applying coaching techniques to open up your employees thinking and allowing them to explore the options 
that they come up with is a much more powerful way to go about that. If you leave a coaching conversation and you are tired from talking, um, that's a good self-awareness of, okay, um, this is an opportunity for me. I need to have them talk more. This is a blank sheet here for identifying options um, because many times we feel like we need to outline the actions. We are, we're, we're leaders. If you're, if you're on this call, you either are, are a leader in your job or you're a leader in your current role, even if you're not leading a team, but you're likely interested in going to that next level. So it's important that you um, create that collaborative relationship. You create buy-in, you foster innovation, and that you support growth. Because when you do that, it really is going to allow you and your team to, to get to the next level. So raise your hand. Use that raise hand feature um, that Kelly mentioned earlier. If you've ever been told, told how to deal with a problem, what decision or choice to make, or which way to tackle a job that you felt when you felt like there met, might be a better option for you? Kelly, let me know how many hands are raised because I don't have the ability to see that, I don't think. No, it's okay. I'm following it right now. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we've got quite a few, about 50%, I would say. Okay. And I'm guessing the other 50% of you just didn't click the button. <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> I think it's safe to say we all have been in a situation where someone told us how to do something and we thought, you know, there is a better way to do that. And either we didn't share that because we were not comfortable with that relationship um, or we were not given that opportunity to do that. So I want to encourage you to think about how your team falls into that and how you can create a situation where they are invited to collaborate. They're invited to share in that decision making because there might be a better way than even your way in solving that problem or getting to the goal. And ultimately, as a boss, if your team is working together and getting to the goal, and as long as they're following, you know, they're not breaking any company policy or laws, like who cares how they go about it? Let's just get them engaged and get them excited and empower them to go about it in the best way, even if it's not your way. So we have gone through goals, reality, and options. Let's talk about um, confirming their, confirming the will in this process. Okay, so so what will you do is what I want you to keep in mind when you see the W or the will. This stage is almost a mental run through. You'll get them to think out loud how it could go, what they might do, how they might feel, et cetera. So in the will part of the coaching process, um, the coachee makes their decisions and commits to actions. Future steps are to be taken, future steps to be taken are confirmed and agreement is reached on how support will be provided throughout the ongoing development process. So this can be um, done in a way of paraphrasing. So um, if you have been employing your great listening skills and maybe even that's taking notes during your conversation, um, you're going to then repeat back to them, especially if you have come to consensus on what some of those options might be. So by paraphrasing and playing it back, um, you will help to build um, their psychological contract with that of, yes, this is what I'm going to do. And while you're talking about, you know, getting there, you know, getting to this will stage, um, it's important also that you as a good listener and as a good leader are looking at their body language, listening to their tone of words. Um, I have had managers get through, you know, coaching conversation and, um, you know, they, they go through these steps, but they're completely missing the really the core of what's happening because they're not listening to body language uh, or they're not listening to tone or reading body language. You, you know that there is a difference between someone, and I know you can't see my face, but if someone says to me, yep, okay, that's what I'm going to do. You know, does that feel like they're excited and caged and this is what they're going to do? Um, it, everything that I heard in that tone was, you know, either they're going to begrudgingly do it um, and probably resent you as a manager and likely um, not stick around long or want to do a good job for you because they're doing it in a you know, not positive manner because you have not gained their buy-in. Or, um, you know, if you hear, yes, that's what I'm going to do. 
uh, you can tell right there that their tone and their buy-in and th that they're on board with getting to that goal. So your listening skills is really critical in this whole conversation. And this is where um, you have two ears and one mouth. So you cannot listen a lot if you are talking a lot. So this is where, again, asking questions, probing questions for probing, you know, learning more, um, and really listening and watching what that employee has to say is important. I mentioned that coaching conversations can happen on the fly, which they can. They can happen in the moment um, as long as it's at, you know, appropriate time. But this is also where the power of listening is critical because um, you can potentially decide, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go through a coaching conversation and redirect this employee right now while we're out, right out, you know, in the middle of the task. But if you are distracted, if you are checking your phone or you're thinking about 10 other things or talking to several people at once, you're going to miss out on all of those cues that are happening during this conversation. So I want to encourage you, whenever you have these coaching conversations, whether they are in the moment or whether they're in the office, that being purposeful about them and being fully engaged in that is really a critical part of your success. Um, and then, of course, it's a critical part of your employee's success because the goal of coaching is to help them be more successful. Um, and the best way that you can do that, you know, obviously, is to be fully engaged with that conversation. So when you're finalizing the plan um, in terms of gaining buy-in on their will, um, you will apply a, a process to create a well-defined plan. You want to create a positive work environment to promote performance, and you want to motivate your employee to take action. Now, we don't have time today you know, during a one-hour call to go in-depth into what that well-defined plan looks like and how to execute that. Um, you can definitely research that further, but I just want to encourage you that having that plan together um, and having it be well defined and very specific with when we look back at our original goals, they were we wanted them to be specific and measurable. If you've heard of smart goal setting, that is absolutely relevant in this whole process. Um, our our three day session is probably we go more into the, the smart goal setting and how to really go into that. But obviously, if you want to learn more. Uh, Google smart goal setting and it will help you get more details on creating those solid goals because then you're going to be able to tie that together when you finalize the plan um, and then confirm the will of that employee as you're moving forward. Okay, so once you nail down an option or two, it's time to get the employee to write it into that firm plan. By getting them to draft a plan with immediate action, that they will. I'm sorry, getting them to draft a plan with immediate actions that they will commit to take, they're much more likely to follow through. Uh, I just want to encourage you the power in this. I have seen a huge shifts in um, employees after their, their managers in that coaching relationship gave that, you know, literally had the conversation and had the employee then take it from there. It's so much more impactful. Um, then the managers previously were showing up with like, okay, here's the goal. Um, you know, they did talk about options and reality, um, but then they took it back on themselves. They closed it up and said, okay, I'm going to document everything. I'll put our plan together that we talked about and I'll send it to you. Well, that does two things. Number one, it makes more work for you as a leader. Your time could be much more effective spent maybe in other coaching conversations with your team, um, building them up in a positive way. And number two, it really inhibits their performance. Um, having them own that whole conversation and putting the plan together um, makes them much more likely to follow through in that. The well-defined plan provides clarity about outcomes they will achieve, how they will achieve them, and the criteria for this success. So, Definitely talk through their plan with them um, to confirm that you're on the same wave, wavelength because this is another opportunity for um, disconnect is, um, you know, we've discussed our goals, we've talked about reality, we've talked about options, and we've even discussed our, our plan of how we're going to get there. But making sure that it is specific um, and well-defined, that they know how to define that when they put that plan together is important. And I want to encourage you that coaching, again, this is not just a one-time thing. This is an ongoing collaboration. So employee goes back, they put together their um, action plan of things that they will take, and, 
and they deliver it to you. And if you feel like, and I want you to look at that, is this specific and measurable? Are there timelines tied to this? How, do, how are we going to know when they've achieved success? And if that is not in there, boom, this is a great opportunity for you to engage in a continuous coaching relationship and go back to them and say, great, thank you for putting this together. You have a really good start. One of the things we talked about was Having, you know, I want to, I want you to build in, I know we discussed measurable things, but it's not in writing. So I want you to put that back in there and then send it back to me. So make sure that you, you know, not only um, let them do that, but then guide them in that so that you are giving them that feedback to take their performance to the next level. An example of this is, so we've talked a lot about coaching for um, non-performance, but I've also mentioned a lot that coaching is for our high performers to get to the next level. So if you have a top performer who you've identified as someone that can do more, is capable of whether that be going to the next level in their, um, in their job title or even just taking their performance to the next level in their role, they can and still should put together an action plan. So the end of this conversation is, okay, what are our plans? What are your plans to take your performance to the next level? Uh, maybe that's attending a leadership development training. Maybe that's um, speaking at a meeting. Maybe that is taking on a special project or initiative. Um, you can create timelines, you can create deliverables, and you can also you know, talk about what they own in that so that your next conversation, you can pull out that plan and say, how's it going on X, Y, Z? And then all of a sudden you're entering right back into that coaching relationship um, just very fluidly and it'll become a comfortable manner because it is just that way that you lead is through coaching. It's not necessarily, hey, hey, employee, come in. We're going to go into a coaching right now. Um, they don't even necessarily know it because it is a constant collaboration and coaching relationship where you're always evolving through that um, goal, reality, options, and confirming the will and putting those plans together. I know we're running through a lot in a short time, so I just want to encourage you again, if you have questions, definitely throw them in the chat box um, so that we can um, discuss them here shortly. So in the last, in, the, in this next slide, we talk about identifying the first step. In other words, um, once they've created that plan, now, now what do they do? Um, so identifying the first step that they can take helps them feel valued with that investment. It helps to foster a better working relationship. You've also given a chance for a role model to become a mentor to your employee. So if it's a development opportunity for that employee to learn, um, allowing employees to learn something new, of course we know it's essential to their development, um, but they're gonna feel valued knowing that investment that you've made and allowing them to maybe become a mentor or giving them a mentor really is a huge powerful step um, in helping take your employees uh, to the next level. New skills learned could be shared with other employees. So your high performer um, can make a huge impact on your team, not just through their own performance, but by then you know, sharing with other employees. And they're going to feel empowered um, if you ask them to share. So again, that example of sharing at a meeting or mentoring you know, other employees, or maybe you're gonna use that top top performer to mentor someone who is struggling with their performance. It does not mean you have to say this person is struggling and so I'm going to have them be your mentor um, or you know say that out loud versus um, creating an ongoing collaboration of you know you would have a coaching session with maybe a low performer and possibly that would be an option that you may identify together of um, say I'm your top performer being a mentor or helping that person. And this is where questions, um, questions is really the key to a good coaching relationship, asking the right questions. So if I know, you know, I think it would be great to have Sam mentor um, Sally, who is my low performer. I would love to do this. I could show up and say, Sally, I want Sam to mentor, Sam to mentor you. And Sally might feel like that's not great, right? But in the course of this options and brainstorming step pre prior to the step that we're on now, um, I could ask her, you know, what do you think about, um, you know, are there things you think that other people may know inside like tips or tricks on the team that are more successful or more effective um, that might be able to help you? And Sally hopefully will say, yeah, 
there, you know, Sam does a great job at whatever, whatever. And that's my window of, oh, you know what? I agree. Sam is excellent at that. What if we schedule some time for you to spend with Sam so that you could talk about X, Y, Z? And then Sally's like, wow, yes, great. So we've gotten to the goal um, part, you know, in that, but just the way that we go about that and asking questions um, helps them, you know, then take that relationship from just telling them what to do, but more empowering and um, motivating for them. Okay. Motivation is important, of course, in this, well, in effective leadership, but also in coaching. Motivating your employee is really essential. Um, many times, as we know, money is not all the motivation that we need. Employees prefer to have a great working environment and specifically with their manager. Um, so it's your job as a manager to create that environment. Um, and this slide has a nice little overview of the five B's. Be consistent, be caring, be a cheerleader, be respectful, and be flexible. This requires you to rethink the way that you manage. And if you find yourself challenged by this topic, um, there's definitely, you know, a ton more training that we offer or lots of places offer on going more in depth on these areas. But I want to encourage you that this does not mean that be flexible doesn't mean that you waver on, on goals or on teams getting to high standards and high expectations and executing on that. And being a cheerleader does not mean that you are not still, you know, a driver when it comes to getting results. But it means that you're creating a relationship that is going to be fostering trust and motivation for that employee. Trust is, of course, critical to a solid coaching relationship. Recognizing the importance of trust helps you to demonstrate attitudes and actions that build high trust relationships. And it also allows you to avoid behaviors that damage trust. Really just taking a step back and looking at, you know, what what level of importance am I putting on building trust into every relationship I have professionally, from my staff to my colleagues to my, my supervisors? Um, as a part of coaching, your employee has to trust you. They have to know that um, you are on their team and your biggest goal is for them to be successful. Nobody wakes up in the morning and thinks to themselves, I want to go to work today and see how many people that I can make mad, right? Or nobody wakes up and thinks, I'm going to go to work and, and see how many things I can break. No, no one does that. Um, but as managers, it's easy for us to get frustrated when things go wrong or when things are breaking or that consistent person is the, 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 the problem child on the team. I mean that in a very endearing way, but it's easy to get frustrated in that. It's important that you still treat them consistently um, with these areas that I mentioned on the slide higher, because that's what's going to build trust. Um, you can still address, you should, can and should still address, you know, if someone is having uh, an attitude problem and it's impacting the team, or if someone is consistently breaking things, we still hold them accountable, but trust is the foundation of a strong um, coaching relationship. And a part of that is always respecting your employees, keeping things confidential, keeping your promises, and telling them that you believe in them. It is so empowering for an employee to hear their boss say, I know you can do this. I believe in you. And maybe they have failed 99% of the time, but you're having this conversation with them because you know that they have the capability and perseverance to get to the next level. So as you're interacting with your staff, um, you know, just also use this as a self-awareness. You know, how am I showing that I always respect them? How am I protecting confidentiality in conversations? And that's not just keeping the door shut, but that is even in just other conversations that are happening. How are you remaining respectful to all of your staff? Keeping your promises, um, telling your staff that you believe in them and encouraging them. That's the foundation of solid coaching. Um, and of course, building that trust in coaching relationships. Coaching should be a place where you and your employee can discuss things openly. So with trust, um, your relationship is built over time. Trust instills confidence and reliance. 
and trust demonstrates integrity. It's open and it's honest. Lacking in any of these areas could help, could hinder you um, instilling trust in your employees, which then would which then would hinder your effectiveness in coaching, which then would hinder your would hinder your effectiveness as a leader. So trust is foundational in all of this. Okay, let's talk about transitioning to the next stage. So after a coaching conversation, um, how to know when you have achieved um, success. So you review the goals and the progress. Um, you will also, of course, list the behaviors that went into that and then be able to assess growth in that. Determining if success is achieved is a crucial element to the coaching process um, and to the confidence and engagement of your employee. So if you fail to recognize the successes, you really could hurt your coaching process, that ongoing um, relationship. Failure really only happens if we give up um, or if we fail to redirect an effort early. So coaching someone successfully is just as much dependent upon the approach and commitment of you as a coach as well as the approach and commitment of the employee. Again, they're owning it. They're doing the work. You're just, I like, I, I like visuals. And I have this as a visual of, you know, if someone's running a marathon, your, your job um, is not to necessarily show up behind them and put them in a wheelchair and push them. That's not what a coach does. Um, a coach also does not go to the end of the marathon with a carrot and say, come on, come get the carrot, here you go because you're running a marathon. You can't see the carrot at the end, nor do they stay back at the beginning line and say, okay, here's, your, here's where you're gonna go, um, see you later. A coach is somebody who's going to be able to check in. They're gonna be at the beginning and say, here's where you're gonna go, I know you can do it. They're going to be maybe riding in a car um, that's going to be checking in with that person at stop points along the way in the marathon and encourage them, okay, what are you struggling with? What are you, you know, obviously you can't stop running a marathon, but finding out about things that they need along the way and, and not just encouraging them, but eliminating barriers and assessing how they're doing, letting them know their pace. And then the coach is going to be at the end and they're going to be cheering for them and, you know, great job. I'm so proud of you. Um, so that coaching relationship um, that same visual can be applied to you as a leader as you approach your team. So transitioning to coaching is moving your employee to the next level of development. Um, that is in their development goal, in their developmental goals. Um, in any case, as you're going through coaching, it's really important to make clear transitions. So making it clear tells the employee that they've achieved success and that they're ready to take on new challenges. Um, and this is where you would do an overview of a review of the accomplishments given, verify your employee agrees, and then engage your employee with the next development level. If your purpose is to transition the employees to the next development goal, then follow the steps above, only this time um, engage your employee to that new goal instead. So really you're entering right back into that next cycle of coaching and going through that grow foundation or grow um, foundation. Always make sure that your employee is ready for that next level of de development before you go through that process. Of course, in our um, you know, three-day program, we go through much more in depth um, on testing readiness for transition and how to go about creating uh, discussions for career development that are going to really foster that one-on-one -on -one and really create that healthy transition um, for you. Okay, so in summary, a lot of information in an hour, um, but hopefully gave you a really good foundation for developing a positive partnership that supports your employee growth. And PS also then will support your growth as a leader. Um, we talked about how to provide effective coaching and feedback within a relationship of mutual trust. We talked about clarifying our goals, our criteria of reality, creating options for your employee and developing them into a plan and then motivating and supporting your employee to achieve their goals. So again, grow, goal, reality, options, and will. Okay, so um, I would love to open it up for questions. Um, we are about a little bit before the hour, so I'd love to hear, Kelly, if there's questions. 
Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Erin. If any of you have questions, we will stay on the line for the next few minutes. So feel free to type those in the chat. Uh, or in the questions menu option, I'm sorry. Um, also, I want to point you guys to our website at newhorizons.com. Uh, there you will find our Center for Leadership De and Development um, that includes all of our courses, including this one that uh, Aaron presented on today. Um, so you can register and sign up for any of those courses. You can also contact your local New Horizons rep for further information. Uh, if you do not have a local New Horizons representative, just log on to our website at newhorizons.com and do a zip code search to find the center nearest you. We do have quite a few questions here, so let's go ahead and get started on those. Um, who determines the need or aspiration in current reality? Coach, coachee, or both? Likely, um, I would say both. Um, it, this depends upon the circumstance and situation. Um, sometimes it's very black and white, where the reality is you're supposed to make 100 widgets an hour and you've been making 50. So that's obviously very black and white because of predetermined goals. Um, but in a development situation where we're working on someone to take their development to the next level, um, that would definitely be more of a collaboration conversation. All right, and what is the best way to practice leading with questions versus telling? Uh, the skill of pulling answers out of the coaching needs to be practiced. What do you suggest? Oh, great question. Um, so there are several, tons of resources um, and good books on this topic. Um, the Honestly, my best answer would be our three-day course, we go through practicing this and doing some role play and really applying it. Um, but it's also, if you had to, if I had to just try to describe it is back to that begin with the end in mind. And how can I, how can I frame this conversation to be more me learning? And then knowing that these are some of the goals that I want to get to, like I would, my begin with the end in mind, I would love for Sam to be able to mentor Sally. Um, but I want Sally to want that too. So uh, just approach that in a way of under, you know, seeking understanding of, or I will ask them, you know, do you have ideas um, or what, what are your ideas to help resolve this? And sometimes they'll say none. Um, and I'll say, instead of saying, well, here's what you should do. I'll say, well, do you want to hear some of mine? And just that one little question positions it. So they're like, oh yeah, I do. I do. And you've gained a little bit of buy-in in that. It's changed their mindset from um, you know, you just telling me what to do to, oh yeah, you're helping me because I can't think of any ideas. Um, so there's definitely some little, little tools I would suggest just trying to bring it in in small ways. And the more you practice it, you know, the easier it gets. All right. Um, and is there a difference between coach and mentor or is it just the terminology? Well, some people use it congruently. The way we're refer referring to it today is more coach as a leader, whereas a mentor may be someone that purely um, works with you kind of more as like a job shadow or someone who works with you hand in hand on the job that is watching you um, or possibly helping just with your leadership development. Whereas the coach is really involved in all aspects. Um, and is more of that accountability piece. Sometimes a mentor could be, you know, those two terms could be used congruently, but as I refer to it today, and as we talk about that coaching relationship, um, it is a little bit different than a mentor. And what's the best way to manage a conversation with your subordinate if the discussion becomes laborious? Great question. So you, obviously want to de-escalate any emotions um, and potentially take a pause. Um, and even if it's your emotions, and if you need to say, you know what, I think that we just need to take a brief, as long as it's a purposeful pause, let's just take five minute break and come back to this and make sure that they're not going out screaming at the other employees, but that they maybe you step out of the office and they stay in there and you go in another office. Um, sometimes just a pause can be really helpful in that. It is important not to you know, force coaching on anyone because it won't be effective. So your your biggest goal at that point is to de-escalate. Maybe you need to involve someone else, maybe approach it in a different manner. Um, a, a topic I love sharing about is emotional intelligence. And that is all about using our emotions to help our performance. And when we go through that training, we talk about how to use your own emotions as well as help man others manage those other emotions. So um, that's also another good topic to learn about um, because it will make you highly effective as a coach. 
All right, and this is going to be our last question. Uh, do you have any recommendations for coaching up to your manager? Oh, I love this. Um, I believe that this is absolutely a, a powerful thing to do and that managers, a good manager is going to welcome that feedback. Um, I think you need to assess, you know, what that relationship is with that manager first. And is that a comfort level that they have and are they welcome, you know, open to it? And maybe, and again, approach it with questions, you know, like, and you could even say, hey, I attended this webinar and it was just this really awesome girl and she told me to um, talk about coaching and I'm really thinking about this in all of my relationships. And I would love for us to create a dynamic where we both provide feedback for each other. And is that something that you would like is some feedback about um, ways that you could best help me or ideas that I have about um, our team or your performance, or maybe you don't want to say your performance, but in other words, just kind of feeling it out now and approaching it with a question, um, again, is going to get their buy-in or is going to, if they're like, nope, not happening, um, then, you know, you'll save some efforts and potential emotional energy and, you know, not approach at that time and maybe in a different way. All right. So that will wrap up today's session. Erin, thank you so much for joining us and speaking on behalf of New Horizons. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you again, everyone, for joining us. I hope you will uh, visit our website and see our full list of available course offerings under our Center for Leadership and Development, uh, such as the ones Erin spoke about today. And uh, please join us for future webinars as well. We run at least one of our leadership and development webinars once a month. So if you visit our website, just click on the webinars link and you can sign up for any upcoming sessions or view past webinar recordings in our archive library. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Uh, that will conclude today's session. Thanks again.